Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, before we begin our program, I would like to mention a few prayer requests and then I will call Pastor Christian to pray for our friends. One of them says, I need prayers for my wife who went away um, with my two children to come back. This is not easy. It needs God's intervention. My wife left with a nine-month-old child, and my prayer is that the Lord may give me wisdom to care for him. I, I think the meaning of this is maybe the wife left and this man remained with nine months year old, uh, nine month old child. So this is a challenge. Uh, the other one says, pray for me that I may marry my fiancée. Please pray for my family to accept Jesus and live in love, peace, and harmony. This is the best one. I need prayers for my wife who is unfaithful that the Lord may change her. This is a man of God. There is Holy Spirit in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, it's five years since I married my wife and we have not gotten a child. My prayer is that God may bless us with one. Pastor Christian, you're welcome for prayer. Amen. You know, Pastor Mbaga, the word of God says in Jeremiah chapter 29, mm -hmm. the Lord says, I know mm -hmm. the thoughts yes. I have towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil mm -hmm. to give you a future mm. and a hope. Yes. Amen? Amen? And so we are coming before God who invites us to pray and to seek Him with all our hearts. Let's pray together. Oh, Father in heaven, we humble ourselves as we come before your mighty and holy presence yet with no fear because you welcome us with love and you invite us to open our hearts to you and to express to you our greatest need. Forgive us of our sin, Lord. May the blood of Jesus cleanse us from all sin. And Lord, as we come before you, we come, Lord, with thanksgiving and praise, but also with our petitions that we want to make known to you. Lord, we pray for this mother that has left with evidently no reason mm -hmm. and her husband is confused mm -hmm. and he's in pain. Lord, I pray that you would give him strength, increase his faith to trust in you even in this difficult situation mm -hmm. and be with the mother, Lord. Heal her pain, her heart that has caused her to behave this way and Lord, impress her, compel her to come back. Be with the other mother, Lord, that left her husband with a child. Give him care and wisdom to know what to do. Give him peace yes. and convict her heart, Lord, to come back. You created the family to be united, to be together. Please, Lord, bring them together once again. Be, Lord, with this young man who is anticipating marrying his fiancée. Lord, give him patience, give him peace. And apparently, Lord, I pray that you would increase um, their, their closeness, that they may know the timing and when to declare themselves as husband and wife. Be with the home, Lord, that is looking for peace and joy and love. These are gifts that come from you. So, Lord, pour these gifts into their hearts, into their home. All good gifts, gifts come from you. So, Lord, open their hearts, open that family's home, and pour these blessings that there would not be enough room to receive it. 
And Lord, we pray for those that need victory in their lives, that are addicted to habits that are destroying them. Please set them free. And Lord, we pray that you would heal the pain of marriages that, that need healing, that have been damaged by many reasons. And Lord, you are the God who is able to not only heal, but to bring victory so that they will grow stronger and closer to each other every day. And so, Lord, we pray that you would open our hearts this evening to understand the different methods that you would have us learn to apply so that we can have vibrant and radiant marriages and homes that are full of your presence to testify of a God who is good. So we thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Um, these methods will save your marriage. I'm presenting to you some researches which have been conducted about 70 years, 50 years. And uh, when you look at them, you'll discover that all these researches are helping us to go back to the Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible is everything. There is something I just want to, to make it open. Because when uh, the person who was introducing me just mentioned it. So I want to make it so open. When we say that we have both hormones, uh, female and male hormones in us. It doesn't mean that we support the idea from other people who believes that if you have feminine hormone, you can be whichever gender you want. Are we together? No, we don't support that. By the way, if you, 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 you go deep in so-called homosexuality, it is devilish. But also they are tempering with our biology through foods and everything. So we believe that God created a woman and a man. Or man and a woman. But both are human beings. Hallelujah. These methods will save your marriage. Uh, don't forget this. Share only informations that you are sure they can't assassinate the character of your spouse. You remember that? Make sure the person you talk to is a person of good reputation and good conduct. So don't talk just because you want to talk. Don't share information because you just want to share information. Information is power. Whoever you talk to, he or she may use that information against yourself. Before you share the information, you have to ask yourself, if this person decides to be my enemy, will he or she use this information to destroy me? It's better to keep quiet rather than saying something which will destroy you. Hallelujah. The person you can share your issues without fear are only two people. Or are only two souls. Or only two spirits. Number one, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus and professional counselor. Why am I saying professional counselor? They have their own regulations. They have their own limitations. They have their own rules. Any professional counselor knows that you will never give out information about your client no matter what. And if you do that, you are against the law. When you see me sometimes here, I'm sharing some testimony about people. I will never share any testimony without consulting a person first. Are we together? 
And sometimes even if they, they are telling me, Pastor, you can share this information, I would just listen to that information. Then I, I tell them, this one I will not share. You want me to tell people about this, but I will not tell them because this one is not allowed. But the best person than all is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He's the only one who can keep the secret. You remember one day when they brought that woman who was committing adultery? Remember the story? They never brought a man. They brought only that woman. When I go to heaven, I will ask them if they are there. But do you see what Jesus said? Even myself, I will not condemn you. That's the kind of Jesus we have. Hallelujah. Tell him everything. Jesus cares. If you want to make your marriage work, make sure that the effort of restoring this marriage is not one person effort. For married one knows this. It is very hard. If you are struggling to save your marriage, but the partner is not there. He or she doesn't care. You are the only one who is struggling. You see things are not okay. But when you talk to your friend, your partner, your spouse, he is just saying everything is okay. Nothing wrong. But you see something is not okay. And I'm telling you tonight, it's so sweet if you are trying to make your marriage and you have a support of your spouse. If two of them are going the same road, you can save your marriage within short time. Marriage is the institution that is being operated by two people of different genders. Hallelujah. In quote, born male and born female. I'm saying that because there are some people who say, I was born this way and then I changed. That's not marriage. But for, don't forget this. Marriage, the institution that is being operated by two people of different genders. Just the act of being in different genders itself is a problem. In quote. I repeat again. I don't support one gender. You remember that one? But because we are created in a different way, we think differently. And I said, I, I told you that. Men think different. They perceive things different. Men are, uh, is, is like, a uh, woman is multifunction and man is one-minded. They are so different and, and we see things differently. So when we get together, we have to understand each other. You have to know the way women think so that you can cope. And women should understand the way men think so that we can cope. For example, your husband may ask you, where is the cup? And he's in front of the cup, but he don't see it. Where, where is my, my mobile phone? The mobile phone is there. That's how we are. But Pastor, why, why are you th that way? We, we focus on one thing. And we can't mix those things in one room. When you talk to a man, don't bring too much topics. If you want to talk about the school fees, just pull out the topic called the school fees. And discuss about it. And when you are done, go and pick another one. But when you, you talk about the school fees, you have not finished that one. You're talking about house rent. It is not done yet to talk about our parents at home. That one is not finished yet. You talk about going to church early in the morning tomorrow. Man's brain gets hot. But a woman can talk about many things at once without making a mistake. 
God created them that way. Hallelujah. By the way, even if you have a, a girl at home, girl speaks faster than boys. And I'm telling you this evening, when it comes to argument, we will never win the argument when we argue with women. And the only way we do when we see that they are defeating us, we become angry. So when you talk too much, I'm getting confused. I can't defend myself. The only thing I'll say, I am going out. Don't disturb me. Just that's the sign the brain is hot. Um, if anything wrong happens, there must be a joint effort from two of you to solve the problem. Hallelujah. Keep that in mind. One person cannot solve the problem. She or he may try to. But along the way, she or he will not succeed alone. Yes, we need cooperation in this. The Bible says, can two walk together unless they are agreed? Maybe you see your husband has a problem or your wife has a problem. If you approach the person and tell him or her that there is this and this is not okay, if she cooperates like saying, yes, I can see this and this is not okay, how can I get out of this situation? If two of you agree, you can walk together. Things we need to stop doing if we want healthier relationships. I'll just mention them. You can take them later. Number one, stop overthinking everything. And instead, hold each other accountable to speak up when something is bothering you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overthinking is a problem. What does it mean? Your spouse can do something wrong. Instead of thinking of this, just a single thing which is not right, you begin taking everything for yourself. He did this because of this and this. He did this because of, he's just ignoring me. I've been saying this every day. That's overthinking. And I am sure he did this purposely. There is no mistake here. He intended to do it. That's overthinking. Remember I told you that any negative thought that comes in your brain, the more you repeat it, the brain tells you it's true. So don't entertain overthinking. If there is a problem... Just talk about it, open up, say it, speak how you feel. And if you are listening, when your friend or your spouse is expressing his or her feeling, don't take it personally, especially if it's a woman. Because they can even cry. And a man will say, I don't see any reason her crying. Why, why is she crying? She is crying because to them everything is connected with emotions. Everything. Food, color. Even when you see them wearing any clothes, it's not for you, it's for them. Are you there? So don't think that a woman will wear clothes for you. No, it's for them. It depends on the feeling of the day. It depends what kind of hormone is dominant to her that day. So when she comes out, it's blue Monday. She will come out with blue like this one. Oh, let me tell you. She may go inside the room and have her clothes and come out. The feeling will tell her, no, 
she will go inside and change the second one. The feeling will say yes, but when she gets out, the feeling says no, she will go back again. It depends on the feelings of the day. So don't shout and say, what are you doing? When I'm talking to men about coming uh, to church early, most of them are saying, Pastor, we want to go to church on time. But my wife will always come late. And I tell them that's how they are. It's not late. They want everything to be okay. Because even the small porch they are holding is connected with their feeling. Just look at them. They have a lot of them. They have a lot of pair of shoes. They have a lot of those small bergs. They have a lot. They have a lot of mobile phone covers. Number two, stop prioritizing your partner's needs at your own expense. We need to strike a balance between what? Huh? Take care, taking care of ourselves and each other. You are not a slave. Make sure that we have a time of your own. Especially women. When, when I, I just look at them and then I say, may the Lord help them. I'm so sorry if I will offend you. On Sunday, I'm leaving here. You are from the same office with your wife. You're driving the same car. You come to the same house. But a man will sit down and wait for the food. In Kenya, they are not like that. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Just think about this. Both of you are from the job, not work, job. You are coming home together, and another one is busy cooking, washing those things you know, and the other one is reading the magazine. Waiting for food. And you're waiting there. A woman will give it for you. You are eating comfortably. And during the special song, you need singing. It's good when you get there. Someone is doing this, by the way. If you want to cherish a woman, just get into the kitchen. Tell her, I will cut small this sukuma wiki. Just relax. Wait for me to do it. Hallelujah. Precautions. And when we help you, don't criticize us. <laughs> because he may help you and then you say, mm -hmm. <laughs> No, 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 no. Appreciate. Hallelujah. Yes, appreciate. That's how it should be. Appreciate. If we help each other, the smile will be bigger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember one of my friends said, Pastor, I will take this in action. He's, he's my friend. My friend is a brother. And when he went home, he told his wife, just relax. I will cook. And I will cook ugali. He got into it. Cooking. 
and everything was okay on the table. And the woman came. You, you're welcome. You're welcome. She says, what is this? I wish you could have told me to do this. My friend came back to me and said, Pastor, you are teaching us things which are not practical in Africa. <laughs> Listen for the word of prayer. <laughs> Tomorrow, we'll look at number three. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your love and care. You are worthy to be praised. You are our Father. You give us counseling. You rebuke us. But in love. May you help every marriage to be the house filled with the Holy Spirit and angels. And this will happen when we allow you to be among us. Thank you, Father, for you are going to grant this. In Jesus' name we pray.